Well, good morning, everyone, or whatever time of day it is for you. Welcome to another uh, Yukon Bob Sea Dew Adventure video. Don't know how much of an adventure it's going to be today because it's going to be just a quick little short ride. Winds have been up kind of all week, so the plan for today is to just head up to Lake Simcoe. Going to meet some of the guys from the Sea Dew Tours riding group uh, at a place called. Uh, oh God, the name just escaped me. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> the launch point. Beaverton, Beaverton, that's the launch point on Lake Simcoe. And it's only about an hour and 10 minutes to get up there, so it's gonna be a quick ride up, right on the lake today. And then one of the guys actually has a cottage on that lake, so we're gonna have our house, cottage, whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna have uh, lunch at his place after the ride today. He's gonna to cook up some hamburgers, so that's the plan for today. You got the sea loaded up. Gonna bring the video gear along, see what we can make for a video on Lake Simcoe today. Just a quick and easy ride. Winds have been up kind of all week. Although looking around this morning, Hardly a breeze. It's supposed to be nice and calm today, but the rest of the week is a bit windy. So that's the plan for today. Up to Lake Simcoe. We'll see you up there in about an hour. Okay, we have arrived at Beaverton to a glorious morning. Everything pulled it, pulled up just fine and uh, made it here okay. See, Andrew's already in the water over there. So there's one sea already in the water. He's got a brand new machine. He's got uh, the new 2023 SeaDoo GTX, not the Limited, but the GTX. And I think he's had it out once before today. So we'll talk to him about that machine in just a bit. All right, let's get a couple of things loaded up. I've already got uh, the cameras put on the, uh, the SeaDoo. I did that at home and just drove up with them on, just save a little time while I'm up here. Kind of one less thing to do when I'm up here. It was all pavement all the way up here and only an hour's drive. So I just set it up a little bit earlier. We won't be needing any extra gas today because it's not all that far, but we will need the water shoes, the rope hooked up, the life jacket, and I think maybe a jacket because when we first get out to this morning, it could be a little bit cooler. So I think I'll bring a jacket at least to start with. And two. Plugs are in, yep. Okay. Put my water shoes on. The parking here, by the way, is uh, up over there. So you got to kind of drive around, park up top, and then just walk back down. And the ramp is right here. And this is a pretty good ramp. I'll just show you the ramp quickly. Now, I don't know if they're charging. They were charging last summer. Maybe the girl isn't here yet who was looking after uh, the office here. There's the ramp there. Water's a little bit scummy here, but... Uh, It'll be okay once we get out into the, the big lake. Just a little scummy right here to start with. Okay, let's get this machine in the water. Nice having a little help to back in. That should be good. We look to be pretty good. That should be good. Okay, that's in the water. The other guys have just shown up. So Andrew's got his brand new machine here. This is a 2023 GTX. It's not the Limited, but it's the, the GTX. So this has got the 300 horsepower engine and the ST3 hull, the same as mine. But what you've added is a couple of options here, right? It's all the stuff that you would find on an Explorer. Yeah. So you've got this Explorer seat, which I changed because it Looks nicer and for bigger guys. It's a little bit more comfortable, yeah, a little more for, room. If you're six foot two, six foot three, you can then sit right here. Yeah. Whereas the other seat comes up to about here. Right, and it's got a back, more of a backing on the other seat. Right, so change that out. Um, didn't want the GPS here because I, I do everything with my left hand. So mounted GPS here. Okay, that is a massive ram mount. That is the biggest ram mount I've that's ever seen. That's beefy. Wow. So that's two and a quarter inch. So you've screwed a plate on here. Yeah, you've put the, the arm on here and you got a backing on that plate. Yeah, there's a steel plate behind it. Okay, and then your bracket up here. So that's what, a three inch ball or two, something? Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. And then as you go to the back, yeah. add it on the, uh, the deck extension, which is I think adds almost a foot. Yeah. How does that work with the ladder? Well, because this thing is bolted yeah. into the hull, I think by six or eight bolts, 
then they can mount the original ladder on this. Oh, it goes on to the actual extension of the ladder. Yes. Oh, I see. So then, just like the Explorer, then you add this piece as well, which allows either three of this type of link. One, two, where's the third? Oh, I see right the pop-ups there. there, yeah. Or you can pop these down, and then these things take um, just a 100 liter bag. Yeah. The 100 liter bag will sit here, and it just goes into these four holes. Just put it in, twist. Ah, uh, okay. Or the link system, three components could go on there. Right, so you could actually do gas, 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 gas. So and five gas tanks. And a cooler on the back. And you can stack. And you can stack the gas tanks. Yes. Wow. So basically you turn a 300 performance machine into a, uh, an Explorer, uh, heated handlebars. Yeah. So in the fall, the only thing I didn't add was the um, windshield, which looks a little goofy. But in it looks it looks goofy. Ex except in October, I want that windshield. I I'm hearing a lot of good things from people who put the windshield on. Wind noise reduction, just noise in general. Yeah, it's easier on the face. It's uh, the problem have I have with the with the windshield is uh, you can't put the cover on. There's a special cover for it. You can buy a cover for it. The Explorer. So I've got the Fish Pro cover, which takes care of this extension. Yep. But the Fish Pro cover is the same as the Fish Pro uh, the. Explorer cover is the same as the Fish Pro, but extends for the windshield. Okay, so there's that. The other issue I would have is with the camera gear, being able to shoot through a windshield and stuff like that. But I, mount everything around. Yeah, and re to reach it would be difficult. So that's, that's one thing. So this just gives you so much more flexibility in terms of what you can carry because of the extension. And then this platform here. So give me a little bit of cost. What, what do these things cost? Uh, I think this one is... Well, it could be four fifty. Yeah. For this piece. Yeah. This thing, I think, is six fifty. Six something. Yeah. Uh, the seats. Well, I got the idea from uh, someone else on YouTube. Yeah. Not, not me. Not you. <laughs> um, and uh, he said he changed his. He got the blue one, and uh, but he's like a six foot two, six foot three, and he said he's way more comfortable with this. So that's where I got the idea. Plus, it matches very nicely. When you buy the seat. Is that additional, or can you order the seat from the uh, Explorer and then not take the one? You cannot do that. So you no. got to pay for the seat. Now you've got two seats. I got two seats. I see. Okay. So you could sell the other one. You could do anything. I don't know. So look at that, folks. This is a cross. Then this is really a cross between the Explorer and the GTX. It's got uh, quite a few of the components from the Explorer, but the one thing about the Explorer that a lot of people have said is they don't like that 170 engine. It's just a little bit too small. They'd like to have a bigger engine. So now this has got the uh, they got the 300 engine and it's all built into this package. And apparently my Sea-Doo is right in the way of the launch, so I'll have to move that. Okay, coming, Greg. Hang on, hang on. Why are you launching on this side? I thought you'd launch over there, because my sea is right there. That's why. He just wants to give me something to do. Okay, now we got to move. It would have been a lot easier just to launch on the other side. Yeah, no, not, not for you. You're right. Just for me. There you go. Park right where I was. That's a good, it's a good spot there. And I'll go and find a new spot. All right, so we've got all the machines in the water, and uh, I don't think we're going to have to pay today because normally they have somebody manning that booth in the summer months. Maybe they don't get here till later, or maybe they're not doing it during the week. Although last year during the week they did have somebody there, and you had to pay a fee to get in and out. But uh, I think we're going to get away with it today, and we won't actually have to pay. There's Andrew's new one, three hundred. And there's the 300 Limited. So there's going to be a couple more than I thought. Uh, Andrew's got his son with him, and he just brought the sea dew down from the cottage, which is on this lake. So there's one, two, three, four, five of us, and maybe somebody else might be joining us on the water a little later today. So we'll see about that. Life jacket's still here. So let me put the camera down, get the life jacket on. Look at the color of that water, just like, like it's full of mud. Very, very brown. It's usually a little dirtier in here, but I've never seen it that brown. 
And then there's a bit of a wharf area along there and the open water of Lake Simcoe is just out there. Put a jacket on this morning because I don't know how uh, cool it's going to be out in the water. I think it's going to be a little bit cool, but it is definitely going to warm up a little bit more as uh, the day goes on and the winds are supposed to be fairly light. Can't believe how brown this water is. Okay, let's go. Everything's secure. Yes, Johansson. That's her. Didn't she just die? Yeah, she did. There used to be a columnist who was on TV and radio for a lot of years. Her name was uh, Sue Johansson, and uh, she wrote a column all about sex. And she was one of the first people to openly talk a lot about sex uh, on uh, public airwaves. And apparently uh, that's her cottage right there. It was her cottage. I think she just passed away just a short while ago. And uh, that boathouse there, the double story one, that's where she used to live, right there. Sue Johansson. Anyway, that's it. A little Simcoe trivia for you. Water's a little bit clearer right here. Look at that triple boat launch there. Wow, that dock system. That's amazing. And speaking of Lake Simcoe trivia, I thought we were actually gonna be going the other way on this lake, and I was gonna point out to you a little place further up the lake. In 2002, Pope John Paul II stayed on a little island in this lake called Strawberry Island. He was here for some youth retreat, and uh, the Pope actually stayed on Lake Simcoe on a little island called Strawberry Island, but we're not gonna be going by that today. That's out towards Aurelia, and away they go. I just had a, a viewer comment on a, a video I made a little while ago where I was attacked by a swan. He said a friend of his was out and saw that same swan. This is in the Toronto Inner Harbor area. And the swan, he, the sea dew had actually broken down and the swan came out and started pecking right at him. It was that aggressive. The one I had was just coming up to chase me and I had propulsion to get out of the way. But in his case, the swan came right at him. So there's three of them right there. They don't seem to be as aggressive as they are in the uh, inner harbor of Toronto. <laughs> Some big rocks on the bottom. Yeah, there's a lot of rocks right off that point. Oh yeah, it's really shiny, big sucker. <laughs> Ron's just saying that that area we went over with the rocks. In the earlier days, they used to come out here and pick up all the props off the bottom of the water. <laughs> Apparently on this lake, Lake Simcoe, before the Trent Severin Canal system, which was built, which was what, late 1800s, early 1900s, something like that. This used to be a very, very shallow lake. Uh, used to be able to run wagons, apparently, from what I read, right across the lake. It was sort of like knee or ankle or waist deep, the water. 
And then when they built the Trent Severin system, they kind of flooded this whole lake and became a lot deeper in kind of a cottage country area for Toronto folks and people in the surrounding area. This is a big draw because it's relatively close to the city. And now it's a fairly deep lake. Not, it's, not, it's not really deep. I think in some spots it's 80, 90 feet, something like that. But uh, at one time in its early history, this big body of water used to be uh, pretty shallow. It's about 35 kilometers long, north to south, and about 25 kilometers uh, east to west. I thought for sure Greg was gonna take off and soak me right there. He looked like he had his hand ready on that throttle to hit it when I was right behind him, but he was considerate. There's about five big islands in uh, Lake Simcoe. The biggest, right back behind me there, has this ferry that runs back and forth between the mainland over there and the island over there. It takes cars back and forth. It looks like there's a cement truck on that uh, particular ferry right now. And it just runs back and forth here uh, all day long. Up oh, the guys have stopped just over there. Ooh, there's a big wave from that ferry. Ooh. some pretty nice beaches along uh, Lake Simcoe. I think this one is Sybilt, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken, but uh, they've got a barrier system up here to keep uh, boats out. And then they've got a big swimming area in there and a nice sandy beach, long beach. There's several of these beaches along uh, this part of Lake Simcoe. People just park up in the roads there, picnic tables and stuff like that. Nice little place to come for the day to have a picnic and get the kids in the water or just have a swim to cool down. Lots of parking. It's a good spot. Well, it's turning out to be a beautiful day on uh, Lake Simcoe. It's supposed to get to about 27, 28 degrees today, and uh, so far the lake is pretty calm. But these guys have just been telling me a lot of stories about how horrendous this lake can get and how fast it can get rough on this lake. They've told me some stories where they've tried crossing this lake with a bunch of sea dews in like 9, 10, 11 foot waves, where you're basically just rolling up the top of the wave and then rolling back down. And because the area is so sort of shallow through here, it's only about 12, 14 feet deep. From the bottom of the waves, you can almost see the bottom of the, the lake. You can see the, the bottom of the, the lake as the waves suck up and down as you're coming up and down these waves. So some horrendous stories of how, how fast this lake can get rough. I've never been out on it when it's this rough because I'm always planning for the best of weather. So they've been out over the years in some pretty, pretty rough stuff. I don't know if that's just bad planning on their part or they enjoyed it. <laughs> But you know, I think it's always good to have a couple of those experiences where you're in pretty rough water like that. It just gives you an idea of the capability of your machine and what it can handle and how you have to deal with water like that. Just in case you get caught in it sometime when you're not expecting it. If you've been in it once or twice, you kind of know what it's about and what you need to do. That's a couple of the last suspension machines around. BRP made those suspension machines for a number of years, they don't make them anymore, but those guys really seem to like them. And Andrew, who has that new GTX uh, 300, he has a couple of suspension machines. One of them is right there that his son is riding on, but he's now gone to the same machine that I have, uh, except it's not the Limited. And of course, as we said a little bit earlier, he's made a bunch of modifications to it, basically taking a lot of Explorer, Sea Dew Explorer equipment, the seat, and things like that, and putting it onto his uh, GTX. doesn't have a cottage on it.
bit of a lighthouse there, right on the point. Another little bit of trivia for you about Lake Simcoe. This is the fourth largest lake that is wholly in Ontario. So that means I'm not talking about the Great Lakes like Lake Ontario because those are US and Canada, but in Ontario, this is the fourth largest lake in the province. You know, there's Lake Nipissing and a few others that are bigger, but uh, this is right up there, number four. And here's the lighthouse right here. I see a weed eater. Let's go have a look at that. What it does is it goes along the water, thrashing along the surface of the water where weeds are getting very close to the surface and it kind of scoops them up and then it contains them and then it can pull them into this uh, compartment that they can take them out of. That's it right up here. Like all this stuff on the surface of the water here that can get sucked into an impeller. This thing just sucks it right up. It's like a uh, combine, whoops, sorry, combine harvester on the water. I could probably get right through there. Yeah, that's deep enough. Can I get through here? Why not? Well, we don't want to get into those weeds. We'll go around those. Look at this stuff right on the surface of the water. Okay, Andrew, go over that and try out the IDF. I don't have it. Oh, you don't have IDF? Oh. Can you get it on that machine or not? Yeah. yeah, it's an option. It's standard on the Limited, but an option on his machine. Now, I've never used the IDF yet. Probably... 30 years I've never needed it. Yeah, he's, so 30 years he's never needed it. I've needed it maybe once or twice, but uh, the whole trick is not to get yourself into that situation in the first place. Keep an eye out for weeds. It does happen though. Once I sucked up a bunch of weeds, had to go to shore and kind of then get right, because you can't turn the machine over by yourself. So what I had to do was get right near the shore, put some goggles on, and I just kind of dove underneath the machine with the, the arse end of it sitting out on the water, went up underneath into the grate, stuck my hand up there, and just started pulling hunks and hunks of weeds out. And that did the trick, it cleared it out, and I was okay to get back to where I had to go to. Jackson's Point Lighthouse. So that boathouse dates back to the 1930s. Up until just recently, that was the largest boathouse on Simcoe Lake. That's enormous. And then the house back up over that way. This one looks like it goes back quite a few years as well. Look at the, the platform that comes off the front of that up there. I don't know if they used to jump off of that or dive off of that. Probably not. It's a bit shallow right in here to be jumping off of that. Probably just a place to have your morning coffee or something like that. But it's, it's run down a little bit now. Now look at the house back behind though. Wow. This guy's got the Canada Goose lawnmower system. He just keeps all the geese in here and they look after the lawn for him. Hey guys. A little bit more over there. It's a little bit high. Of course, you get all that poop 
that comes with the Canada geese. Now, some people might consider that to be fertilizer. So you get lawn mowing and fertilizer all for the same price. Well, that's gonna do it, guys, for another Yukon Bob video. Nothing all that exciting today, just basically a little cruise around Lake Simcoe. I think we probably covered about half the lake. We went all the way from Beaverton, all the way down towards the Keswick area. So a little uh, tour around Simcoe and uh, just a, a little look around the lake today. We've done some long trips in the past. This one's just a quick, short, easy ride today. We'll see you guys on the next Yukon Bob video. Till then, stay safe on the water, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.